So we have seen an example of a simple bacteria, how it senses its external environment and how it responds to it. Now let's move on to more complex system, eukaryotic system. We are going to look, first of all, going to look at the example of a specific type of signaling system that involves G proteins. G proteins are linked to the receptors. These receptors are called G protein linked or coupled receptors. Let's first look at the, uh, the structure of these receptors. These receptors have seven transmembrane domains. You can see on the slide. H1, helix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Helix 3, 5 and 6 participate in binding of the ligand. In this case, we have written agonist binding, but I will tell you what agonist means later on. But basically, these helices, 3, 5 and 6, they participate in binding of the ligand. Ligand binding moves helices 5 and 6 closer. When ligand binds, these two helices come closer and it squeezes this loop, which is called C3 loop. And when this loop is squeezed, it of course changes the shape and the proteins inside the cell can recognize this change in the receptor structure and they can convey this message to the other parts of the cellular machinery. Helix 7, H7, this basically determines the ligand specificity, to which ligand be able to bind this receptor or not. The once the ligand has bound to this receptor, it causes that conformational change we just saw. The helices 5 and 6 come closer. The, the structure of C3 loop changes and the protein, a protein which is present in the cytoplasm and it is attached to the plasma membrane, inner surface of the plasma membrane through a specific molecule, a hydrophobic molecule. Once the receptor is activated, this G protein binds this receptor, G protein receptor. This binding causes a change in this G protein. G protein is called G protein because it is attached to a GTP or a GDP. In inactive state, the G protein is bound to GDP. Once the receptor is activated, the G protein interacts with the receptor. It causes this G protein to get rid of its GTP, GDP. And since the concentration of GTP is more than GDP, several folds more, the probability is that this protein will bind a G deep GTP. When that happens, the G protein is now activated. Once the G protein is activated, it splits into two parts. G protein is made up of three different proteins, alpha, beta and gamma. The alpha subunit of this protein dissociates, whereas beta and gamma stay together. The alpha subunit then moves to the other part of the, the cell. It is still attached to the plasma membrane, inner surface of the plasma membrane through a special type of hydrophobic molecule called Farnesyl group. It finds its effective protein, the protein that is going to transmit the effects of this ligand receptor interaction to the rest of the cellular machinery. So during this process, once the G protein binds the receptor, it also causes ejection of the ligand from the receptor. Uh, now remember this that just as important it is to receive a signal, it is just as important to get neutralized effects of that signal too. So we don't, once the signal has been generated, the cells don't keep on responding, uh, sensing that receptor because we need to change once the receptor has been received, cell has performed the relevant duties. Now it wants to move back to ground state. So it is very important that the ligand is also removed from the system, which happens once the G protein interacts with the activated receptor. So one of the ligands for G protein linked receptors, coupled receptors is epinephrine, also called adrenaline. 
Some people may know it as adrenaline. So when adrenaline binds its receptor, it causes different effects in different tissue, which we have talked about that. For example, epinephrine receptors on the heart muscle cell cause it to cause more forceful contractions of heart intestinal blood vessels the smooth muscle relaxes and it causes more nutrients to be absorbed in lungs the also the the smooth muscles relax allowing more air intake resulting in more oxygen absorption and which is made available to the other cells in the body basically adrenaline is generally released in response to stress so when someone is in stress what do they need they need fuel fuel is removed from the liver the same epinephrine binds receptors on the liver cells and causes them to release glucose so more fuel is made available more oxygen is made available to burn the fuel and also this the transport system the circulatory system is made more efficient by pumping more blood so this is the effects of epinephrine now let's see how these effects are mediated through the cellular machinery so the the protein which g protein attaches to and activates is called adenyl cyclase it's a protein which is also embedded in the inner part of the plasma membrane here i have circled it adenyl cyclase basically takes an atp molecule gets rid of two phosphate groups right here and it pr produces a cyclic compound called cyclic amp we have encountered this this molecule earlier too when we were talking about bacteria the lacopron so this cyclic amp basically is the molecule it's a secondary messenger we talked about small molecules small messenger molecules that do not have any enzymatic function of their own but they modify effects or actions of other proteins so this cyclic amp is in that category this molecule is produced and it will go on and further cause a different effect just as importantly it is pertinent to mention that there is a, another molecule called cyclic amp phosphodiesterase we talked about cyclic gmp phosphodiesterase earlier this molecule will break this cyclic amp and make it a normal amp molecule terminating its effects adrenal cyclase one receptor can activate 100 g proteins a single g protein generally activates a single adrenal cyclase once g proteins activate adrenal cyclase it can synthesize many cyclic amp molecules several hundred molecules are produced per receptor hormone complex so here again is the signal amplification step which is very important in the signaling cascade or signaling pathway how do we know that this actually happens a simple experiment was designed take a cell which does not respond to epinephrine which has adrenal cyclase but it has receptors for other hormones but not for epinephrine you we can make lysosomes small vesicles which contain the receptor for epinephrine fuse it with this cell now once we attach epinephrine to it we can measure the amount of cyclic amp and we can see now the cell is producing cyclic amp meaning the epinephrine receptor basically this experiment suggests the epinephrine receptor interaction results in activation of adrenal cyclase which produces cyclic amp we will see what cyclic amp how it mediates its effects in the cell in the next module